just got a headbrush prime, you've tried out the factory presets, and now you're ready to build your own rig. We're going to start by clicking up here where it says plus. That gives us a blank rig. As I always start with an amp, so let's go over here, hit a plus sign, and then we can choose amp, which is the top of the list. The standard headrush amps here, there are another set of amps under Revolver, but I'll go to headrush, SLO 100 on the crunch. Just take a listen to that. It should sound pretty horrible at the beginning. Okay, that sounds pretty horrible because it needs a cabinet. So let's go ahead and hit a plus sign down here. I'm going to hit cab, I'm going to go to cab headrush. So that would be a 4x12 greenback with 25 watt speakers. Now, there are some settings over on the uh, side of the screen here, and you can adjust those with the knobs over here. So I could turn the break up right here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to double tap on the speaker, and that gives me access to all the settings on the main screen here. And you can change the microphone. I happen to like an AKG 414, so I'm going to choose that. Pretty good. On axis. That's a little jangly for me, so I'm going to go with off axis. Okay, you might notice that this is a little bit distorted right out of the gate. I'm going to give us a way to clean that up by putting a volume control in front of the amp. I'm going to use the expression pedal on the head rush. So I'm going to go to the plus sign next to the uh, amp here, right before the amp. Hit volume, volume, and hit default linear. On the expression pedal above it, there's a little screen that says A or B. If you touch the toe, you can switch back and forth between A and B. Make sure it's on A so that the expression pedal is actually working. When I turn that down, it cleans it up. I'm going to leave that back up for now. I like to use a compressor on most of my cleaner rigs, so I'm going to go to the very first spot right here. I'm going to hit plus, compressor. Standard grade compressor, it's a simple one, but it works really well. That's actually added some gain. So I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. I'm going to touch the compressor, and you can see I've got these settings over the sides. So I'm just going to turn the knobs, it's a little hard for you to see. Turn this to about halfway. Okay, it's got a good amount of compression without being too distorted. You know this sounds a little dry, so let's go ahead and add a reverb. I personally like my reverbs after the amp plus, but a reverb with 11 reverb, Cathedral, which is a giant reverb, but... I'm pretty happy with that. That's a pretty good bass sound in just a short amount of time. We know that you want to have some drives. So let's start with my favorite drive, which is probably not what you think, a graphic EQ. So I'm going to hit plus sign right here. EQ, graphic EQ. Let's go with the default for now. I'm going to double tap on that. To make this a drive, I'm just going to turn up the gain all the way up. So that's now at plus six. <laughs> While I'm at it, I'm going to just boost up the uh, mid-range a little bit here. One drive is enough for some, but not enough for me, so I'm going to add one more drive here. I'm a big fan of the Boss Blues Driver, so I'm going to go to Overdrive, a BD Drive, which I believe is that Boss. I'm going to turn the gain down a little bit. I'm going to turn the tone down a little bit. It's a little too bright for me. I like to drive the amp. This has got a great amp here that it's going into, so I'm going to drive the amp a little bit harder. Now I'm going to turn off the EQ so you can just hear the Boss. <laughs> You can combine the two. I'm going to just add one more effect, I think. Tap on this and drag it over. You see how I did that? Delay, air delay, stereo bounce. I'm going to drag this cabinet off of here. Drag it down the bottom to delete it. I'm going to go and replace it with an IR. So I'm going to choose either of these. 4x12 60s right here. And I'm going to double tap on that. 
we we were choosing the uh, 414 microphone, so let's go ahead and choose the same microphone. Here we go. So here's that hot tip. We can roll off the high end by using a high cut, and I'm gonna suggest you try four kilohertz. Taking away some of that ice pickiness. Might even go down a little bit more, go down to 3,500. And the same for the bass. We don't need to be fighting with the bass player for the low end. So let's go to low cut here, go all the way up to 120. Still plenty of low end, but now we're out of the bass player's range. Now let's do a little bit of housekeeping. There's some important things that we need to do to make sure that this works for us. First one is we want to look at the gate setting. If you go to input over here, tap on that twice, no gate. That's what we're hearing right now. That's why you've got noise. But we could use a little bit of gate. So step number one is that this little white line tells us where the gate opens and closes, and I'm going to move that. So that is the threshold. Drag this up. And you see you've got the green is showing just the bass noise coming from the guitar. I've got the white line just above the green. I'm going to go just a little bit further above that. The gate opens and when I stop playing the gate closes, right? The next thing I want to do is notice how the gate's chattering right there. That chattering can be a little bit annoying. So what I like to do is make the gate stay open longer. So instead of 11 milliseconds, I like to go to like over a thousand at least. So. 1200 milliseconds. Now when it opens, it stays open for a little longer and then fades out. Here it fade out naturally instead of the chattering. And the other thing you can do is you can change how far the gate closes, whether it closes all the way or whether it closes halfway. I prefer to have it close halfway, so I'm going to go to noise filter and change that all the way to 60 instead of 120. Now it doesn't close all the way when it does close. So. So much more natural sounding, much more practical. Now, one thing I should have done along the way is I should have decided what color I wanted each pedal to be. Double tap on that, then I'm gonna change that to light blue. For my graphic EQ, which is being used as a drive, I'm gonna change that to orange. For my uh, second level of drive, the boss, I could make that blue to match the color of the real pedal. I'm gonna make it red for overdrive. Now I'm going to set up how the foot switches are arranged on the front of the unit. So if we go up here to where it shows the picture of a foot switch, these are the, uh, the middle eight foot switches on your pedal board, but I would probably want the compressor in the first position along the front. So I'm going to move that, tap on it, drag all the way to the left. Next, I would probably want my first level of gain after that. And then I'd want my second level of gain after that. So you see I'm just dragging them around. And then in the last position on the front, I'd probably want to have my uh, delay right here. Now these ones along the top, I would never turn the cab off, I would never turn the volume control off, and I'd never turn the amp off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tap on each of these, and I'm going to go to unassigned. Tap on volume, go over here and say unassigned. So now the next bit of housekeeping is to sort out our level. Turn on all the drives and the compressors and everything. Get everything turned on as loud as it can, the volume all the way up. I tap down here where it says output. Double tap on that. Now play as hard as I can. You see as I play that it went up not quite all the way to zero. We want to get all the way to zero. So I'm going to tap on uh, rig volume. Then I'm going to turn the knob to the left of the screen here and start turning that up. So I've added 7 dB on that, and now it's just touching zero, it's going orange, but it's not going red. Red is bad. So I would say the last thing we're going to do now is save our rig. We're going to go up here to the little floppy disk icon, and we can call this one Rookie. And uh, we're ready to go and do a gig with it.